This is the Thompson's cathode ray tube lab, and I just want to give you a quick overview of what you're going to do. I suggest starting with an accelerating voltage that is constant. You can assign different values to different students or allow the students to pick whatever accelerating voltage they want. This will be the voltage between the cathode and the positive plate that the cathode ray will be attracted to. There will be a hole in this uh, positive plate that will allow some of the cathode ray to pass through. There will be another hole in a neutral plate that will help to make the cathode ray into a nice straight line. It will then enter into a region that has both a magnetic field and an electric field. The electric field is caused by the voltage across the plates of this deflecting capacitor. So there is an accelerating capacitor and a deflecting capacitor, both of which the students can control the voltage for. There's a magnetic field in the region here that is caused by electromagnets that are not visible in this simulation, just to make it easier to see what's happening with the electron. I'm going to leave the magnetic field constant for now and I'm going to adjust the deflecting voltage and I'm going to go up with the deflecting voltage and my goal is to get the cathode beam as straight as possible and it seems that that happens at a voltage of 6,630 6, volts. I could then find the electric field between these plates by simply taking the voltage and dividing by the plate separation. The program will actually do this for the students and they can write down their electric field and their magnetic field. They can then lower the magnetic field and find what new deflecting voltage will straighten out the beam for this lower magnetic field. And they want to get as close as possible to a straight line and they would once again record these values, the electric field and the magnetic field. After doing a few trials, I would suggest at least five trials, they can plot out their results. They should get a nice linear graph when magnetic field is on the x-axis and electric field is on the y-axis. They'll find the slope of their graph and what we want them to realize is that the slope of that graph will turn out to be the speed of the particles in this beam. If the students already know how to convert voltages into speeds, this would be great to have them work through this calculation. Once the students know the, volta the uh, velocity of this beam, they could then shut off the magnetic field totally bring the magnetic field down to zero. Then they want to patiently lower their deflecting voltage until the electron beam hits the very edge of the capacitor. They can now treat this, get it as close as possible. They can now treat this like a projectile problem and what they want to do is they will take the length of the capacitor that will be delta x I'll just call it x for now use the velocity that they found before that hasn't changed all we did was change the magnetic field and the deflecting voltage and they would use the distance for the capacitor and the velocity to get the time how long it took the beam to travel the length of the capacitor. They could then use the kinematic equation delta y. Delta y will be the vertical distance traveled by the beam. That will be half the plate separation and that should equal one half a t squared. What students want to do with this is determine the acceleration, the vertical acceleration of the beam while it was between the plates of the capacitor. Once they have that acceleration, they could then use Newton's second law, 
Acceleration equals force, which in this case would be the only the electrical force. We turned off the electromagnets over mass. They then know that the electrical force is equal to Q times E, where E is the electric field strength. They bring the E to the other side of the equation and they solve for the ratio of charge to mass. They should get very close to the ratio that Thomson got for the charge to mass of an electron.